Greetings, everyone. I'm Reverend Charlotte Van Halker, and it is a joy to be sharing the Word of God with you today. Would you pray with me and for me? Loving and gracious God, we give you glory, honor, and praise. Holy God, we thank you for this time where we can reflect and meditate on your Word. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will break open the Word for us, the Word that was made flesh for us. Let it change us and transform us for the glory of your kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. This morning we are going to talk about celebrations around the table. Welcome. Welcome to our house or welcome home is something we say to our guest, family, and friends. No matter which tradition or culture you come from, whether it is the Southern hospitality or Asian hospitality of Hindu culture, in Sanskrit means Atiti Devo Bhavo, which translates in English as guest is God or in an ancient first century village of Emmaus. Hospitality is foundational to every tradition and culture. It is seen as a point of honor for families and villages to welcome guests and offer them the best home has to offer. On World Communion Sunday, all are welcomed at the table of grace. Christians across the globe come to the Lord's table to celebrate Christian unity. It is an expression of our oneness, interconnectedness, and shared identity in Christ, which unites us across cultures and continents. It means to open our heart, mind, and doors to welcome strangers in Christian love to open our eyes to see the divine image of God in every person, to see the diverse gifts and graces in them so that truly we can come together as the body of Christ. Friends, our sharing in this common meal represents our uniqueness, intricately woven into the fabric of Christ's love. And so we are not bound to a physical table or a building. Christ is the table of grace. The resurrected body of Christ is living and breathing in every corner of the street, both the highways and byways. And you and I are the part of resurrected body of Christ. And we prepare and become open communion tables for others wherever we may find ourselves. Just as a table is not uniform, it comes in different colors and shapes and sizes, we all are Eucharist tables of different shapes and colors and sizes coming from different cultures and traditions. And we offer ourselves to others in the strength of God's Spirit. You see, the main purpose of a table is to bring people together for conversations, connections, and create memories. Or else a table by itself is just a piece of furniture. And so as open communion tables, unless we invite people at the table, unless we open our hearts and lives to strangers, to listen and to include everyone and connect with their stories of transformation, we will simply be a piece of furniture. Friends, in our story of from Luke's Gospel, we see the two disciples walking on the road to Emmaus. They are lost in their own deep grief for the death of their master, talking about all the things that had happened until they are invited by a stranger to retell the story and deepen their connection through conversations. So much so that the disciples urged the stranger to stay with them 
and have a meal. And we see in verse 30, Jesus, when he was at the table with them, he took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. In that ritual of table blessing, their eyes were open to see the stranger in a new light, the true embodiment of Jesus himself. Friends, Jesus is a stranger, a guest, a neighbor, an unknown person still waiting to be welcomed in our culture and in our churches. So what do we do when the concept of a stranger, neighbor, or we is always challenged? And we struggle with the idea of we universally. What constitutes we? Who is we? We think about we as me, my people, my country. And until we broaden our horizons to include all people in the we, we cannot really understand the behaviors that constitute our oneness or Christian unity that Apostle Paul is really talking about in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. You see, Apostle Paul's cry for Christian unity is directly re related to our behaviors. In other words, our oneness is connected to how we treat each other. Paul is not just, just talking about superficial behaviors or saying hello and shaking hands, but rather truly making an impactful change, behaviors that speak truth in love, behaviors that work towards making systemic changes in an unjust world, behaviors that create policies and procedures for the flourishing of all people, behaviors to make every effort to include all voices, behaviors to create safe spaces where all people are valued and welcomed. And this, my friends, will constitute the newly formed we. How is this even possible in a world that is filled with so much hate, fear, and discrimination towards a stranger? I believe it is possible when we show our willingness and readiness to enter into each other's worlds through the integration of our stories into each other's hearts and beings, a mutual radical hospitality, an openness to enter into each other's world, not to be threatened by their world or to lose your own world, but rather to enhance our world in a moral way as a constructive way of learning to relate to the contrasting worlds of others. Spirituality writer Parker Palmer in his book, Company of Strangers, Christians and the Renewal of America, describes strangers as a spiritual guide as those who can lead us into deeper truths about God and self. Palmer highlights the role of the stranger as one who can transform and enlarge our restricted worldview when we invite or welcome strangers into our personal or private space like our home. When we see ourselves through the eyes of a stranger, we experience what they experience. And this, my friends, is a life-changing experience. So the invitation for us is to be Christ-like open communion tables of grace. May our lives be transformed to be a table of inclusion, a table of compassion, a table of openness, a table of deeper understanding of welcoming a stranger, and a table of generosity and abundance. What are some ways and new ways God is calling us to be Christ-like in our communities? Friends, 
may we remember that in the breaking of the bread, the disciples' eyes were opened to see the, new, the true identity and presence of Jesus Christ. And so as we gather on this World Communion Sunday, it is in the breaking of our human pride, differences, and fear of the human other, may we see the fullness of God's grace in a stranger. Amen. One thing we've learned from the early church and the early Methodist movement is the importance of community. God never intended us to walk this journey of faith alone. At The Vine, we have launched what we're calling branches, which are small groups that can help you find community where you are. Visit our website if you're interested in joining a branch.